field sports can be very competitive, which causes a lot of pressure on our fellow athletes. We decided to ask students the pressures they feel as an athlete regarding parents, competition, grade level, college, and other factors. First, we asked some of Campfield's athletes if they feel pressure on the sports they play and why. I'll just say, being that quarterback and everything, it's a lot of pressure on the team. Like they rely on you and all like that. So, being that quarterback, I had to do like a big step. But you know, I'm a man for the job, so I stepped up and helped my team, and they helped me. I really felt a lot of pressure as a freshman because like it was just my time to like, like, get to know the program. Like as a freshman, it was like a time to like. Like set a base for how you're gonna perform as you get older in high school. So it wasn't ever really a lot of pressure, it was just, just fun, I guess. I mean, college from there, football is like a job, so it's not gonna be a, so it's not gonna be like just playing around. I have to get serious. So it's gonna be a kind of pressure like freshman year is like to get into something new. Like it, like it's like basically coming to freshman year of high school. So I'm gonna be like once in like maybe like two months pass by, I should be straight or okay, if you don't know what that means. I feel like a lot of pressure is like, I wanna like be like good enough to like, so that our team can like do good. Cause I know there's like a lot of people that like are playing lacrosse this year. And I just wanna be like, get a good spot on the team, I guess. Cause I like practice a lot, or at least I try. Yeah, there definitely is pressure on the team. like around things like she said we have a lot of players so playing time becomes a really big um, thing you have to worry about while you're practicing you want to make sure you practice your best so that you can get more playing time in games um, as a senior this year uh, when we started lacrosse it was really small so i don't feel a ton of pressure individually because um, i'm not going to play in college or anything so when like when we started the team it was just to have a good time and it still is a really fun sport Okay, well, I'm in, I'm vice president of junior class. I'm in Leo's Club, Y Teens and Student Council. And honestly, I don't think there should be pressure into doing certain things, because whatever you want to do, you should do. If you like doing speech, do speech. If you like basketball, do basketball. Whatever you want to do, do it. And there shouldn't be, like, pressure to fit in, because it should be something you want to do. But I really don't feel a lot of pressure, because, like, yeah, you know, I mean, like, if I want to do the sport, then, like, I'm going to do it. Basically, I feel a lot of pressure because, first of all, like, I do speech. And, like, in comparison, like, to a lot of people, that means I don't do anything. But, like, I practice really hard. I train and compete really hard. It's just, like, it's a really hard thing to, like, get up in front of people and do that every single weekend. Like, I, t I use my Fridays and my Saturdays for that which is like a big commitment for me because I like to do things. Oh, tennis, like the team, we're stereotypically really, really good at tennis. So like, I feel pressure to like maybe win because like we're supposed to be good and like there's all that, pre like, we're supposed, like we're supposed to be a really good team if you lose, like God forbid, like we're gonna look bad. Like everyone's like, oh my God, like this is just bad. Like we're declining. So like, I feel bad. And the pressures for me for wrestling are I'll usually like look at the kids shoes before a wrestling match and I'll tell if they have crappy shoes on and if they have bad shoes on they'll usually calm me down because like I'll think they're bad so it'll give me like a higher hope to win. I definitely have a lot of pressure between balancing between all those things and it's really hard to maintain the grades that I do so uh, with a 4.2 like it's constant studying and um, you know that's hard sometimes to squeeze in when you have you know, football and choir and track and whatever it may be. Next, we asked if their parents put pressures on them, and here were their responses. No, my parents don't pressure me that. I mean, my mom just makes sure I do, I do good in school. Um, no, not really. They just tell me that I'm a good player. If I want to keep it serious, or they say if I want to make it all the way, if I stay serious, I can do it. So keep me on the right track, keep my head up. My biggest supporters, you could say. I feel a lot of pressure from my parents because it's more my mom because she wants me to do good. It's more like that. It's not anything like negative. She wants me to do good because this is like pretty much the only thing that I do. Like a trophy case in my dining room. Like that's like a lot to look at when you're eating mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's it's, it's really hard to, to like look at a trophy case on days where I don't come home with one. You know? Yeah, like they're gonna like 
destroy me if I like, don't do it. Because I put a lot of money in the tennis. And there's, you know, I don't know. I put a lot of time. Like, I spent, like, I grew up in Cleveland. And, you know, God forbid if I don't do good, like, can't have that. So, yeah, there's a lot of pressure in that aspect. My dad does. My dad puts a lot of stress on me when I'm wrestling because, like, he's, he knows, like, the reality of wrestling like he'll know he'll tell me i need to win this match you need to win this match and my mom's more of whatever happens happens type of woman she'll just say if you don't win it's you still did a good job keep your head up move forward head football coach here at Canfield high school all right um you know in, in stress itself okay i think is uh, more common during the week of a game rather than on game day um, the stress on game day comes from not being prepared. Uh, if you've prepared yourself and prepared the team as well as possible, uh, game day is a lot of fun. Um, a lot of excitement among the school, the kids, the coaches. Um, you know, but, but leading up to Friday night, um, trying to prepare our kids as well as possible, uh, that's where the stress comes in. Are you covering all the bases? Did you leave something out? Did you cut a corner? And, and if you do any of those things, uh, your chance for success have certainly diminished you know, on that particular game. My name is uh, Todd McElroy. I'm the head boys basketball coach here at Canfield. Uh, this is my ninth season as the head boys coach here. Um, you know, I think some of the things that go into coaching is, one, you just do it because, you know, I, I love playing the game, and I think that coaching is, like, the next best thing. And But with any position in any career, there's a lot of stress that's involved. And, you know, I think that that stress for me is, mostly internal because of, I just want to win so bad um, and sometimes you know the, the nights that we're spending you know planning and putting our guys in the right position um, there's a lot of stress I mean you're losing sleep you're not eating right um, and that's that's more stress that certainly comes about with the position but still with that it's still a great position I love doing it and I can't imagine myself ever doing anything else all right I am coach Pitts the wrestling coach <laughs> Uh, there, there are some stresses involved with um, being coach. I mean, obviously there's pressure to try and win, um, but I, I, as the adult in the situation, I try not to um, let that kind of be outwardly known, try to keep that maybe on the back burner a little bit. Uh, to me, the stresses come more in wanting everybody to be prepared to show up on time to do what they're supposed to. So a lot of the stress comes before the event. When the event and the, the match is taking place, I don't really think about stress because, um, I mean, it is what it is. The action's taking place, that adrenaline's kind of kicked in. Um, a lot of the stresses deal with maintaining um, behaviors outside of wrestling, making sure our kids are uh, doing what they're supposed to and sometimes they choose not to and you have to correct those behaviors and worrying about what's going on at home. Next we asked some coaches perspectives on the pressures they feel as well as the students and they provided us with some stress relievers. <laughs> that uh, feel pressure in sports, just be natural, be you. You know, um, there's if you try to be someone else, you try to do things you're not capable of doing, it very rarely works out. You know, so on a game night, uh, we always talk about you just have to do your job. And if you do your job, um, you know, good things are going to happen. I think that, uh, you know, student athletes and coaches alike, I think that one, one piece of advice that I would give them is just making sure you're balanced. I think that if I'm, if I'm so focused on my sport of basketball and I don't do anything else, you know, there's going to be more stress. But you know, going somewhere, watching a, you know, going to watch, you know, my daughter perform a play, or you know, going to a dinner with my wife, or something like that, that's away from basketball. Balance is the best key to to the la to to less stress in your life for anything you're doing that's stressful. How do I manage those? I, I try not to take this like too seriously. This isn't my entire life. Um, you know, I I care about the the sport. I care about the kids, but. It, it, in the long run and whether we win or we lose they're still kids and I always try to remember that so that's how I deal with you know stress when we're when the event is over it's over I go home I, I hug my son kiss my wife and life moves on and I try to tell the kids that too you know the, the way we feel about them uh, isn't really dictated on how well they do in a match um, so that, I think that helps reduce their stress as well 
So when you come here in the morning, be proud of yourself. Take pride in yourself. Take pride in everything you do. I'm a little bit older, so you know I, I do exercise a little bit. Um, spend a lot of time with my kids and my wife, and and I think sometimes that relieves a lot of the stress. And then the, the things I do to relieve the stress during my matches, uh, I listen to music and just like run, warm up, drill harder. Um, usually I I, uh, I find an outlet. Sometimes that's music, and sometimes that's just working out. So just kind of do something to take my mind off of all the stress. So basically when I'm stressed, I just like to kind of take my mind off of what's stressing me out. So I just kind of chill out and like listen to Spotify. So basically like to relieve my stress, music is like my main outlet. So usually I'll just sing. I do a lot of classical music, like I'll sing opera or theater. What I do to relieve my stress is like I'll write down like what's stressing me out basically on like a piece of paper and then I'll just like throw it away like after I get everything out that I need to get out. So some things I like to do to relieve my stress is I like to draw and like paint with watercolors because it's very calming and I also like to listen to music and take naps. This is the round table and we are here to discuss the 91st Annual Academy Awards. Okay, with that, I think we can dive into the biggest like award of the night, which will be the Best Picture Award. The nominees are Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. Any initial thoughts or opinions on these initial nominees? All very good movies, but I've not seen all of them. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen either. The Favorite or no. Green Book. Um, I Black Panther snuck up on me a little bit with this specific category. It, it's deserving of an Oscar, I just don't know if it's best picture. Let's see what the interviewees know about this year's nominees. Can you name all eight best picture nominees for the 2019 ceremony? No. I can't think of any from this year. Black Panther, Black Klansman. <laughs> There's some more, but I forget them. I know there's Black Panther and the Black Klansman. I think Bohemian Rhapsody's on there as well. That's all I know. Um, okay. Uh, Black Panther. Green Book. Um, I don't even, I, don't, I, like, I don't know anything else. Um, oh, I was watching it the other day, um, A Star is Born, what else, that's all I got. Best Picture, so The Favorite, Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, Green Mile, no? That was 1999. No, not Green Mile, Green, <laughs> Green Book! <laughs> My head is in a different place right now. Um, Roma. A Star is Born, Green Book, Black Panther, Black Klansman, The Favorite, um, Vice, and, oh my god, <laughs> I, I really can't name the other one. So there was Black Klansman, Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, Green Book, The Favorite, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. Let's see what the roundtable has to say about the Best Picture category and one of its new and special nominees. Movies like Black Panther haven't previously been nominated for an Oscar, mm -hmm. let alone, dare I say, like the biggest award of the evening. So, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I think what makes something Best Picture, obviously there's a lot that goes into <laughs> that. And I just don't think Black Panther, I can't even like really put it into words, it's kind of more of like a feeling. Mm -hmm. And the movie speaks to different people in different ways, mm -hmm. and I think maybe that's why I don't feel that it deserves Best Picture, but I'm sure there are many other folks that would. Yeah, I have to agree on that. I think Best Picture comes down more to like the craft of filmmaking, and that's like the directing, the cinematography, the acting, the writing, and what like the story has to say. Oh, Black Panther was an enjoyable film, I really liked it. It doesn't hit like the caliber of like a best picture worthy film. Yeah, I yeah. think like super movie, um, superhero movies in general really don't always necessarily mm -hmm. belong in the best picture because mm -hmm. I feel like best pictures like kind of stand for something almost. Yeah. Whereas like 
you know, with superhero movies, it's just following like a comic book and she's like a superhero. Yeah, yeah, she's like, a, like yeah. a very typical, normal plot that's like to be kind of predicted yeah. and expected yeah. at the time. Now let's see what the interviewees have to say. I mean, I think a movie is worthy of best picture if it like, if it like looks really nice and also if like the message is particularly strong compared to other movies. Um, what makes a movie worthy of best picture would be, um, it has like an actual meaning. It's not just a movie for like commercial <laughs> use, um, a, like a purpose, like it has something behind it. I think it's a, it's a multitude of elements. It first starts with like the screenplay. You need to have something that's both like has witty dialogue and has something to say. Like it can't just be like your average like puff piece. And then it stems from like a unique, a director with a unique vision that's able to like bring that screenplay to life. And then it's like all the rest filling in like a great performance, a great cinematography or costume design or production design. Like it's all those elements coming together to make like a perfect film. Next, we asked what were some of their favorite movies of 2019. Um, either Venom or Black Panther. I thought they were both very well-written movies. My favorite movie of this year was probably Eighth Grade, which was directed by Bill Burnham. Um, I didn't really get out to see a lot of movies, but I remember the two I do remember going to see was Black Panther and Infinity War. And here are the roundtable's predictions. I think... In the end, A Star is Born is actually going to win, and here's why. It was just so popular, and like it got so much recognition, and it was still really well done. They managed to do a good job with it. Like, for Bradley Cooper's first time directing, he did a really good job. Everybody loves Lady Gaga. Like, it had good songs. You know, it was well produced. So I think that's why. It's hard. If I had to pick, I would choose, I'm going to choose between, like, you know, Roma, um, I'm not going to say his name, or Spike Lee for Black Klansmen, because they were both really well done. Um, if I had to pick between those two, I would say Spike Lee for Black Klansmen. So that's what I would say. I'm going to say Christian Bale, just because I haven't watched the movie personally, but I've heard so many good things about it, and like, the, how he looks to like the makeup and like prosthetics I guess you would say is really good and I heard his acting was supposed to be like superb. Uh, I'll say Glenn Close for the wife because she already won a Golden Globe for it and she's just a phenomenal actress in general so I'm gonna say her. Her black clansman is it Adam Driver? Yes. Okay I'll say him then because I watched that movie personally I loved it like I don't really like Adam Driver that much but I liked him in that. Um I'll say probably Rachel Weisz or um, Emma Stone for the favorite. I really like that movie and they did good jobs. Roma. I haven't seen it, but um, like I haven't seen it all. I've seen like parts of it. I haven't watched it all the way through yet, but it was so different from any of the films that I've seen this year. I liked If Beale Street Could Talk a lot, but I think it would be Black Klansman, I would have to say just because of how like well done it was, like a period, I guess like a period piece, like the acting and everything in the soundtrack. Best picture! <laughs> um, I honestly think it's gonna be A Star Is Born, and I don't disagree, I really liked that movie. It was a very popular movie, as opposed to stuff like Roma. For best director, um, I would hope it would be Yorgos Lanthimos, or uh, Spike Lee, especially Spike Lee, I love him. But uh, it's probably gonna be Alfonso Cuaron. If not, I think Spike Lee, but you know. I think it's between Christian Bale and Rami Malek, and I feel like it really depends on whether the Academy goes with like the crowd favorite or like the established, like. I don't think Christian Bale's not a crowd favorite, but like I feel like Rami Malek's like super popular now because of this movie. So, uh, probably, mm, I'd say Glenn Close. Why? <laughs> Cause she's Glenn Close. That's why. <laughs> I hope Sam Elliott gets it for A Star Is Born, but I feel like Adam Driver is definitely up there as well. I probably Adam Driver. Emma Stone. 
Just because I that's who I do. That's just who I, I don't even have a reason. I just definitely yeah, I just make it. Just... Um, I don't feel like a Star Wars Born will get it. I think probably Black Klansman. Uh, so best picture, uh, my personal pick would be A Star Is Born because it's my favorite movie of the year, but I think the Academy's going to go with Roma because it's the more important movie of the year. I wouldn't be surprised, and I also wouldn't be against it. Um, best director is going to go to Alfonso Cuaron for Roma. I think Bradley Cooper should at least be nominated, but since he isn't and the Academy gave Roma 10 nominations and it really was a passion project of his, they're going to honor him with the best director nomination. Oh, wait. Going to best actor, it's really a three-man race between Rami Malek, Christian Bale, and, uh... Rami Malek, Christian Bale, and Bradley Cooper. I think Bradley Cooper's lost some steam, but because, like, Rami Malek has become a fan favorite and they're looking for more viewership, they're gonna give it to him. Plus he gave a fantastic Freddie Mercury like performance, he really became the person. Christian Bale did the same though, so if either of them won it, I wouldn't be surprised, but my money's on Rami Malek. Moving to Best Actress, I think um, they're gonna give it to Glenn Close because she's been nominated seven times now, hasn't been nominated, and the Academy likes to give awards like that. Like, we've nom nominated you enough, you just haven't won out yet, so here's your like, Prize. Like, they did it with Al Pacino for Son of a Woman. Like, was it his best performance? No. But also, it's Al Pacino. That's this year. It's Glenn Close, even though I'd love to see Lady Gaga win it. Um, also, wouldn't be surprised if they threw Yalizia Appalicio in there, just because they love Roma so much. Uh, moving to Best Supporting Actor, this is Mahershala Ali it's from Green Book. He's won every award come up to this. I haven't seen the movie yet, so if I want a personal preference, I'd probably say Sam Elliott for A Star Is Born, um, Best Supporting Actress. Um, every award's gone to Regina King. I haven't seen if Beale Street could talk yet, so again, I really can't say much. I wouldn't be surprised if she won it, but my personal pick would probably be Rachel Weisz in The Favourite. She did a great job. Move on to Best Adapted Screenplay. I'm gonna say Black Klansman again. Spike Lee has never won an Oscar yet, and like I already said, the Oscars love to like give awards to people like because they're that person. I think Black Klansman's going to be that movie that finally gets Spike Lee that Oscar. Plus, it would be well deserved. It was a phenomenal screenplay. Best original screenplay. I think this is one of the tightest races between The Favourite and Green Book, but I would probably say The Favourite because Yorgos Lanthimos has been working for um, about a decade now and they like to honor new talent in like the original screenplay nomination. They like to honor new, like, original voices in the original screenplay category. That's why I think they're going to give Yorgo Slime the most the award for the favorite. And to end the segment, here's the round table talking about a group favorite from 2019. Now, continuing to talk about Mary Poppins Returns, and we just started talking about the legend himself, Dick Van Dyke. I love that they brought the him man. back. Okay. I did not even realize it was him at first until I actually looked, and it made me so happy because he was such a fun character in the first mm -hmm. movie, and such a good actor even today. Like, yes, his, like I know the biggest like flaw people say of the original is his accent. What, ladies and gents? Comical poem, suitable for the occasion, extemporized and thought up before your very eyes. All right, here we go. Yeah, I mean, he could have done a more accurate accent, but like, it's I wouldn't have wanted Bert any other way. Like, then yeah. it would just be generic British person number two. Like, yeah, for like the older kids, like for the older kids like us and the parents, like that was like such a cool oh, part. And cool. even for the people who like younger kids, he was a fun character. No, that's so. what I liked about mm -hmm. the new one because like the themes it are catered things to that everyone. Resonate to anybody. Like that's what movies used to be. I feel like yeah. we're in a place now in cinema where like kids' movies are directed at kids, and then we'll try their hardest to make like an adult joke, like the Angry Birds movie or the Boss. Yeah. Movie. That's not a movie. Exactly. They <laughs> That's stopped, a sin. They I, stopped even, I didn't movie. even get the Speaking of sin, I didn't even I get the I unfortunately watched them both. God awful. Just mm -hmm. god awful movie. First of all, why would I want to watch a movie called Boss Baby? It was awful. And he got an Oscar nomination. Why? Last year. Are you kidding? Yeah, I wish I was making that. Oh my god! The bar is too low. What world do we live in? Well, Suicide Squad won an Oscar, but that's beside that the point. That should not happen. No. But like, started. back to Mary Poppins like Returns. That. What I also <laughs> liked on what they did was with Lin Manuel Miranda's character because Lin Manuel Miranda was able to put his own spin on it, where like you can tell he was like calling back to Bud from the original, yeah. but he was like, his own when unique character. When he was rapping character. too. Oh god, the, that the, was the so cover is not the book. That whole, uh -huh. that whole scene was one of the highlights of the movies it. because it like really mixed the elements of like classic film, modern film, and like everything. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Partake, remember me deserved the Oscar for best original song? Boss baby. That's the heroes. I mean, I like how. Partake, you hate nuns. Yeah, Partake nuns. You can say Ella hates nuns. Just great. Dick and Dyke. Okay, we're safe. What's his name? Yorkers. I the most. Lobster. I haven't seen my Like, guaranteed to make me cry. You're just gonna embarrass that I'm like in the middle. A supporting actress is being No footage will go unused, kind of. <laughs> yeah, but like, I think. Do you want me to go into the subcategories? No. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the first episode of the second semester. Make sure you watch the Oscars Sunday night on ABC. Bye. Ciao.